Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I am bringing you a new format for video. It is a hyperlapsed cutting and interfacing video and it is for the Lens Handmade Guardian backpack. So obviously mine is made out of all cork, of course. Sly leather bottom, cotton lining. I go over all of that in the video. Um, if you want to see more cutting and interfacing videos, please let me know in the comments below because usually I skip this content. But if it's something that you learn from and you would like to see more of, just let me know and I'll start recording it. And without further ado, enjoy. What is up party people? Today we are back with this quick cutting video and we are working on the Lens Handmade Guardian backpack. So first things first, you need to print out your pattern. Print it out whatever size you want it. You can go standard at 100% or go lower or higher, totally up to you. If you need to amend the math sections uh, or you know the pattern, the parts of the pattern that don't have pattern pieces, you just take the measurement and then you multiply it by the percentage that you want to make your bag at. So if your front panel is 12 inches, then you take 12 inches and you multiply that by 75% and then that will tell you the measurement that you need to cut it at. So anyway, if you need any help with that, just ask me to elaborate and I will. Anywho, so getting to it, we are cutting out now our main panel. I'm using the Deco Print Cork. I know this cork is to die for. I've been hoarding it for years, knowing that one day, eventually, I would make myself a bag on purpose and not just take home a bag that I messed up. And today is that day, folks. So I just cut out my front panel there and then I wrote on it with a silver marking pen so that I don't forget what is what. Especially if you're going to be using the same corks for your entire bag, highly suggest labeling your pieces. Now this front main panel can be a little tricky because that bottom section, you have to fold it up for certain pattern pieces and for others you don't. And so you can see here, I'm about to cut the curve out. The curve is the only part of the pattern piece, or the only part of the pattern that you use that extra bottom section for. And all of this is notated on this pattern piece, so once you get it taped together, it gives all the info right there, you know, wouldn't you know it. Lens actually gives you the proper tools. Okay, so cut that out. I'm going to remove my paper pattern there and move that to the side. And now, I always like to keep a tidy desk while I'm working. So you'll see, I, I clean up as I go, generally speaking. And now for the bottom panel, I'm using Psy Leather. I got this from Fabric Funhouse. I love Psy Leather for my bottoms because it doesn't scuff, it doesn't tear, it doesn't rip, it doesn't show wear, it doesn't lose its color. It is basically indestructible. It's super high heat tolerant. I mean, this stuff is so, so great for the entirety of a bag, but also especially for the bottom of a bag. So now moving on, I am choosing my webbing. I had uh, played with the idea of using that mauve colored webbing, but you know, I just, I love this black and white herringbone so much. I got that from Georgia Girl Stitches. It is one and a half inches wide. The measurements of course are in the pattern that you need to cut out of your webbing. You can use one inch wide as well if that's the hardware that you have, but it's just something to keep in mind whenever you're attaching it for your top grab handle. And now we need to cut out our lining. I lost the selvage of this. I specifically saved the selvage of this fabric because I love it so much and I didn't want to forget. And I have misplaced it, which is not shocking, but I just went on a wild goose chase and figured out that this print is by Michael Miller. Oh, look at, gosh, if I only would have watched my video a little farther. It's Michael Miller, Voices from Beyond in the Wind Stars Align collection. And there's lots of whimsical, kind of spooky, different prints in this uh, entire collection, but I love this one so much specifically. It just speaks to my little soul. And you can see when I'm cutting out my linings, I like to use my previously cut cork pieces and that's to ensure that my pattern pieces are at the actual same size. But you're about to see here that I messed up because when you're cutting out this front and back panel. If you don't follow those directions on folding up the bottom piece correctly, your pieces are not going to measure up. So you can see I have to recut my lining, which I'm about to do here in a second. So yeah, this one was a little tricky. It really kind of screwed with me. Um, took me a second to figure out that front panel and what needed to be folded and cut and what didn't. And that's because I have a really bad problem of just scanning patterns and not really reading them. OK, 
Okay, so now we need to get all of our cotton pieces interfaced. For the base, I'm gonna fold in my half inch marks here and cut out some Flex Foam 77. I want to quilt the bottom of my bag, which if you've been following me for any time, then you know that I really like to add quilting to the bottom. And when I quilt anything, I quilt it with Flex Foam 77 because it just gives it that loft without having a lot of additional weight added. So here we are, I'm just checking the size, making sure that all of my seam allowances, or making sure that I have enough flex foam cut away from my seam allowances where it won't get caught in that seam. Now for the rest of the pattern, I'm gonna be using Sofuse. I cannot remember if, it, if I purchased Sofuse Plus or just regular Sofuse. By the looks of the bundle, I would say maybe it's Sofuse Plus, but this is a nice new interfacing for me. I don't use this very often, I really enjoy the structure of a non-woven interfacing, but I'm trying to, you know, try new things and check things out. I like the way that Sofuse fuses, for lack of a better term, to cotton. It holds its stickiness really well, and so that is one of the many benefits of this. I have a hard time kind of with Decoville and Decoville Light. It wants to unstick and peel when I'm in the middle of sewing. Same thing with um, decor bond 808 and 809 and it drives me freaking nuts so I really do like the fact that this so fuse and so fuse plus fuses so so nicely it was at this point that I realized that I forgot to cut out all of the parts that I need that don't actually have pattern pieces so I cut out my interior lining pocket and then I also need to calculate and figure out how tall I want my side pockets to be so the way that lens that makes the exterior side pockets is you cut one piece and fold them to have a nice folded top edge. But because I'm doing cork as the exterior of my pocket and as the lining, I'm doing this cotton, I needed to do just a little bit of math. And then I changed up the lining pocket as well. I just doubled the height of it and kept the same width because I do want to have just a nice folded edge for the interior pocket. And you'll see in the construction video, I actually take a piece of cork and line the very top of it just to give it a nice finished edge. Now for my pockets, I am using Decoville Light because I do like that crisp nature of it. And then here we are just, you know, doing the good, long, most boring, worst part of any bag making job interfacing. I've been really considering getting a heat press or whatever you call them um, for this type of work. And I couldn't really reconcile the cost before because I was making just mostly wallets and just using things that were all cork but since I've really been able to focus on making patterns for content shout out to my patrons um, since I've been able to focus on that I've been making a lot more bags and really trying out new patterns and so I remember how much I hate interfacing it's so boring it's so annoying and it adds so much time but I keep hearing from people that it actually, like if you have the heat press, it makes it so much quicker. So I don't know, I might just go for it. Now I'm gonna lay out my waffle, my grid lines for my quilting. And I just lay my ruler at two on two points on my cutting mat and connect the dots. And then I just continue that same measurement the entire way across until I have the entire bottom panel covered in the waffle grid. Now I'm just gonna stick it with some double stick tape and then I decide I wanna add, you know, just an extra layer of security and that way it doesn't get stuck to my throat plate or not a throat plate, my presser, I don't know. I just don't want it to drag whenever I'm sewing it. So I add a layer of Decoville Light just to smooth everything out and add an extra layer of stability. Lots of folks ask me for these kind of videos, so please let me know in the comments if you liked it or if it was a total waste of time. Maybe if it was a waste of time, be nice about it though. And anyways, tune in for the construction video coming soon. Thanks, bye.